Hey guys, and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll take a look at the Python C-Types library. The C-Types library is a rather special library in Python that's used to interface between C, C++, and Python. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that we can call functions from C and C++ in our Python code. And that's a really big deal because C and C++ are much you know, faster. They're better in terms of performance. They use less memory. That's something that's really important, especially when you're doing heavy computation, okay? And even those big libraries like NumPy, machine learning libraries like OpenCV, and artificial intelligence libraries, they are, they're all written on C and C++, okay? And they, they just have an interface you know, with Python. So that's what C-types is, okay? If you're doing some heavy computation work, you want to use C-types, okay? If you want to speed up your code, then you can write some of it, the heavy part, in C-types and that will significantly improve your performance, all right? So that's just the brief intro to C-types, what it is. Now, what are we gonna discuss in today's video? Well, we already have made a video on C-types, and I discussed how to set up C-types, how to you know, generate shared libraries and all that. So if you want to see all that intro stuff in detail, like how to set up functions, how to call them, different ways of calling functions, if you wanna take a look at that intro stuff, uh, then you can check that video out. Okay, I'll link, link you to it in the description below. Otherwise, in today's video, I want to take a look at data types in C types carefully. Uh, I want to take a look at strings, memory management with pointers. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at all these important details in today's video. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. Right, so let's talk about data types. In Python, data types are dynamically typed, which means that, you know, I could do this, then I could do this. And it's gonna work because uh, I didn't actually declare it as an integer. And that's why I can reassign it later on to a string. And this is fine in Python because the whole of Python works this way. But the problem occurs when we start using it with C, you know, and C++. C++. Because the problem is that C and C++ are both statically typed. They are declared, okay? When you declare an in integer in C, it remains an integer for the rest of its lifetime. You cannot change it. Furthermore, C and C++ have many different types, okay? They have like, for, for example, integers. Integers have integers, short integers, they're called shorts. Then there's long integers, there's long, long integers, there's unsigned integers, there's signed integers. There's all this kind of nonsense, but Python doesn't have them. It just has, you know, an integer. That's all Python has. And that's like a one-fit solution, basically. So the thing is, you need some kind of interface, okay? Some kind of way to inform Python that you're talking with C here, which, is, uh, which has all these different types. So you need some kind of way to bring in those C types, you know, the C data types within Python. And that's what the C types library is for. That's its main purpose. It brings in these different data types like this, C bool, C buffer, that's something I think we'll talk about later, string buffers, byte, character, character pointer. Character pointer is a string, by the way, because remember, in C and C++, the entire concept behind the string is that it's a array of characters, okay? Uh, so, you know, it's a pointer to that character of fairies. Then there's double, then there's float, integer, and here you can see the different types of integers, 16, 32, 64 bits, there's even an 8-bit one, there's long, long double, long, long, etc., 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 unsigned integers, and so on. So that's something to keep in mind, okay? This isn't, this isn't a big deal, okay? But it can cause you problems if you don't know about this and if you don't, you know, if you don't, you know, use them where they're supposed to be used. Right, so let's show you one example of where you might want to use uh, these data types, okay? So say I go over here to our C function, to our C library, sorry, and... I create an addition function, okay? Int num1, int num2, and here I do return num1 plus num2, okay? Now I come back here to our Python file, and I want to call this function. Now I can obviously do this, okay? If you watched my previous video, you should already know this. You can do this and it's gonna run, okay? Uh, let me just run that too. It won't run right now. It'll just throw an error because, oh, okay. The reason why this is actually working is because I already generated the .so file with this function, okay? So if I delete this now and I do it again, 
it's not going to work because it says the specified module could not be found. So let me just generate this once in front of you guys. So those of you who didn't watch my previous video, you guys can understand. Okay, this is the command shared, shared library, then the O command for output, then the name of the shared library. Okay, this can be anything. Then the name of the destination library, which, sorry, the, the destination file, which is my C library.c file. And this command is actually not going to work because we're not in the correct folder. Let me navigate there and done. Now, if I run this, you can see the SO file over there, and this is now printing 11. Okay, that means that it's working. So this is the first way of calling functions. There's another way though that some people may prefer. And in this case, we're kind of defining the function, the function declaration in Python. So if I do this, Python edition, okay, I'm trying to you know show that this is a Python edition function. And if I do this, you need to define the types, okay? Arg types, argument types. What arguments does it take? Well, it takes a C integer, okay? Because there's no other way of telling you know your Python code that this is in integer, right? Because Python doesn't really have that. You can't write integer here like you would in Python, okay? Or actually, I've never tried that. What's gonna happen? Let's try that out. So if I do this, what's gonna happen? Will this function actually run? This is a good question. Nope, it did not work. Exactly, okay? Case in point. So you need to use C types over here. So here we do this and there we go. C types, a C compatible integer. Okay, that's the entire point. If you want to interface with C, use the data types from C types. There, 11, it's printed out, great. So this is an example where we want to use, you know, the data types from the C types module. Okay, there are plenty of other types, okay? Uh, again, just use them where relevant. Now let's move on and talk about mutable and immutable memory. Or actually, before we discuss uh, mutable and immutable memory, let's take a brief look at strings, how to create them and how to pass them into C. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here and just remove this and write a new function called display that takes a string. Actually, it doesn't take a string, it takes a, it takes a character pointer. Okay, so it takes this basically, and we'll call it str, and then we'll go down here, and in the printf statement, we'll do this. There. Okay, this should print out a string. So I'm gonna go here, and just for simplicity's sake, we'll do this quickly. I'll just do c library dot, um, what was it, display. And I'll call our function and pass in hello world. Okay, very simple, right? Now let me just recompile this. Compiled, and let's run it. Okay, nothing happened. Why is that? Let's run that again. There. Okay, I don't know why I didn't run the first time. Uh, the etch over here. Only the etch was printed out. What's the deal? What's going on here? Well, it's a very simple fix. Basically, as I mentioned earlier, there's a slight difference. There are two solutions to this problem, okay? The first solution is to just do this, okay? This makes it binary, okay? It makes it a bytes object, and that's something that C understands. Okay, because you can't pass the raw Python string to it. Okay, it won't really understand that. So if I run this, it's gonna work. Hello world, great. Okay, that's solution one. Solution two is, well, this basically. A string is equal to C types dot C. And would you remember the uh, string version for C types? It's character pointer, okay? And over here, if I type hello world, okay, and I think this still won't work because corrector, yeah, it doesn't. Because you need to type over here as well, B. This makes it binary, okay? Because character pointer only accepts bytes. Okay, you see over there, it says value semicolon int and then the pipe operator bytes, okay? Uh, it accepts bytes, okay? Not the Python string. This is gonna work. And I think this WP works. 
with normal Python strings. All right, it doesn't. I don't know, I heard about this. I heard this actually accepts, accepted Python strings. I'm not sure why it's not working this way. It says string over there. Never mind, let's ignore that for now. If I figure it out, I'll talk about it in some other video. Anyways, so this is bytes over here, and this is gonna work, okay? This is a pretty handy way of you know doing things. So you can just use the string. Now, that's basically how you correctly pass in strings to C, okay? Now, I wanna talk about mutable and immutable now. The story here is basically this. I'm gonna print out this string, okay, what do we get? Okay, you see this over here? This is a memory location. This is a character pointer, okay, remember, this is important. This is a character pointer, which means this is a pointer to some memory, okay? So what you're seeing here in these brackets is actually a memory location, okay? Now what happens in C and C++ when you modify a value, okay? If you do something like this, what does this do? Well, what this does is modifies that value in C and C++, right? Because C and C++ have mutable data, which means if there's a memory location, that memory location will be overwritten with a new value, okay? But the problem is Python is immutable, which means basically that Python uses mutable data, which means that data that cannot be modified, okay? That's what immutable means. So what happens? Does that mean Python data cannot be changed? Well, no, that's not what it means. It just means that instead of modifying the data, it's going to, you know, make a new memory location. Okay, so watch this. I've modified the string up here. Okay, now in C and C++, if we did the exact same thing, it should give us the same memory location. But in Python, it's going to give us two separate, wait. Why did it only print out once? Oh, right, of course. Uh, I overwrote it with, you know, a regular Python string. You need to do this, okay? If you want to obtain the value, the Python value of any C types data type, you simply do, you know, that object dot value. It'll give you a Python version of that object. So if I do this now, oh my God, it still needs the bytes object. All right, so if I do this, there we go, look, look, this is important, okay? You see this, the memory locations are different. What this does is tells us that there's, uh, you know, immutable data types here. We're, we're working with immutable data types. We're not reassigning the value to that same memory location. We're basically, you know, ignoring, we're deleting the old memory location, the old memory block and assigning a new one. Okay, this is something that's just important to keep in mind because this is the kind of thing that you know might cause people problems. They might be passing uh, you know a, point, a pointer to a C function and then some weird stuff happens in the background and they're like, what's going on? And they won't know because they won't know this concept. So this is, a, this is just a concept that I want to convey so that you guys don't make any mistakes in the future you know, because you didn't know this. So that's just something I wanted to keep in mind. Now, there's a way to actually resolve this problem, okay? And that's to basically create mutable memory within Python, okay? Using C types, of course, because Python doesn't natively have this. So what I'll do here is just modify this. I'll do dot create string buffer, and this creates a mutable memory for us. There are two ways we can use this function. The first way is just to pass in the string, and it'll automatically create a string buffer uh, you know, of a size that can accommodate that string. The alternate way is to do this. String is equal to C types dot create string buffer and you pass in an integer in here, like five. This creates a string buffer of size five or you know size 10 or size 100 and so on, okay? That's the second way of doing it, okay? But we already know that the string we're using here is hello world. So, you know, we'll just use this first method, okay? now. We're gonna try the exact same thing. The only thing we've changed is that instead of using a character pointer, we've now used uh, a string buffer, okay? So if I run this code now, what's wrong with this? It says byte string is too long. Oh, of course. 
That's because goodbye world is a larger string than hello world. Okay, so in cases like this, it might be better to actually, you know, create a large string buffer, then do string dot value is equal to, you know, hello world, and then do it like this. Okay, that that's the slight downside to just, you know, putting a string in there, because any string smaller than that string won't fit. Okay, if you want to reassign it, because if you're not modifying its value, you know, if you're not modifying its length in any way, then the first method is just fine. Otherwise, if you're dealing with, you know, very variable sized strings, this method, I think would be better. So if I run this code, all right, now look at that. Over here, you can actually see the memory, okay? And it's the same thing. It's the same memory location, which shows that we didn't create any new memory here. It's the same memory being modified. Okay, so that's basically immutable and mutable data types. Okay, now uh, I'm sorry, but I think I'm gonna end the video right here because I think we've gone on too long. I always end up going over the time. And this video is already like 15 minutes, I think. And we've just been talking about data types. So I'll discuss pointers and memory in the next video. Okay, I'll make a new video on that. We'll discuss memory and pointers. Okay, the different ways to create pointers. Okay, there are two different ways, each with their own you know benefits. So we'll talk about those in the next video, okay? So yeah, see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys subscribe and you know, so you receive all future updates. We have a bunch of Python content planned, a bunch of different libraries, very interesting ones too, by the way, okay? New and unique ones that you might not have even heard of, but are pretty interesting nonetheless. All right, so without further ado, let's end this right here and I await you guys in the next video.